Going up in the 50s, uh, you had to make your own fun outside, and we didn't have the television, we didn't have the computers, we didn't have the games um, that the kids have now. And uh, so sitting in a house when it's 20 below out uh, for long periods of time just didn't get it. So we bundled up and we'd play road hockey a lot, which uh, was just boot hockey out on the slick roads in, um, you know, in town where there were high snow banks. We would take chunks of snow, use them for goals, take uh, my uh, my dad's uh, old snuff cans and stuff them full of paper and tape them up with black tape and use those as pucks because we didn't have um, we didn't have shin pads or any equipment. So we'd play that for you know, hours on ends and have some great games out there, maybe two, sometimes three a day throughout the day, uh, just taking time to go back in and eat and you know get uh, get our energy back up and warm up or whatever, but. Growing up, uh, you know, in a hockey community like that, you know, honing our skills, we had no idea uh, what was in store for us down the road. We just were having fun, and and some of us went on to play some uh, some pretty good hockey. But growing up in the 50s, you know, basically wasn't good for Native American Olympics because of the, or just Native Americans in general, because of the fact that the John Wayne movies, the depiction of the American Indian, uh, was not good and we did not want to be an Indian basically or learn the language, the traditions and the culture. It wasn't cool back then. It wasn't until probably in the 70s at Wounded Knee when that whole thing happened where it brought out the, the culture and the traditions where we could have you know our powwows and do our ceremonies out in the open rather than back in the woods somewhere. You know, sometime even in the National Hockey League uh, that you have to just bite your teeth and, and just let it go and try to move forward and, and just try to realize that, you know, there's a lot of ignorance out there in the world and, and uh, racism and discrimination, yes, it is uh, certainly alive and well to this day. After my eye injury where I had seemed to be called back into my culture, it wasn't until 1992, probably, uh, when I was asked to join Billy Mills, Buster Charles, Jesse Rennick down in Albuquerque, New Mexico at the Gathering of the Nations powwow down there when we were going to be honored as Native American Olympians. And it was at that time I had my idea of doing a story on each and every one of these to show the kids on the, on the reservations in public schools or wherever they might be that you know, it's a possibility to, to be able to reach that level of competition and represent your country and your people in, you know, in doing something, you know, in greatness uh, that, uh, that very few have done before. So I want to bring these people forward to, uh, uh, to depict their life, not only as an Olympian, but bring their you know, their heritage and the history and the lineage uh, uh, to show how we, uh, where we came from and, you know, and, and what it took to, uh, to be able to reach those heights. I think it's very important to bring this into a television series. You, let's use this as a tool for the motivation of finishing school. Let's use this as a motivation that, you know, you can do it too, not only not only that we, we did it and, uh, and be honored by it, be able to represent your people, your country, and to uh, go on and do something fulfilling in, in, in your lifetime. Switzerland versus the United States. Finland and Poland also qualified in today's play to join Group A, which begins tomorrow. The United States clearly the stronger of the two teams. In the third, the Swiss tied it up very early at 103, but the USA, thanks to Tim Shee, on a play set up by Sanders, got the winning goal. At 212, it was 4-3 for the United States.
The Swiss had several chances, couldn't capitalize, and the Americans got their final goal at 17-19 of period three to score a five to three win over Switzerland and qualify for Group A in Olympic hockey. Tonight's final game of the day in Olympic hockey had the United States, the dark, the blue sweaters against the perennial Olympic and world champions from the Soviet Union. The Americans, by comparison, are college boys who were put together for three months to organize for the games here in Sapporo. The Russians, a well-oiled machine, six together year after year to keep Russia's name on top of the amateur hockey world. But for the Americans, it's improvement. Just a year or two ago, they were losing by scores of 11 and 12 to 1 to this Russian team. The final score was 7 to 2 for Russia. Fred, you mentioned it. Oh, here's a fight going on in, in front of the, uh, just in front of the penalty box. Forbes and Boucher as they came out. Uh, really going at it as they came out of the penalty box and Boucher is hurt. He's down on the ice. And uh, we gotta have a, uh, a delay here as Boucher uh, and Forbes went at it and now it's uh, Number four, Aaron, who has not seen action tonight, going after Forbes. Broderick is out, in, out of his uh, net, as is Maniago. And we've got a real Donnybrook going here as uh, Boucher seems to be uh, badly hurt just off the center ice uh, face-off circle as Forbes and Boucher came out of the penalty box. Going back to the penalty, it was... Uh and Vadney now uh, jamming a bit. And uh, Wicks trying to keep control as the Minnesota trainer comes quickly to the aid of Henry Boucher. Boucher and Forbes have served seven minutes in total penalties and could not come out until that seven minutes and then a whistle. And we just had the whistle when it was called. They both came off the bench and Forbes went right after Boucher. I took my eye off it then. Well, I, I did too at the start, Fred, but I think that Boucher's head hit the ice. He was face down, and Forbes was on top of him. Now, whether he tried to get up and Forbes put his weight on top of him or not, I don't know, but it looked to me like Boucher's forehead uh, hit the ice, and that's maybe where he's cut. But uh, we've got a stretcher now on the ice, and they are uh, lifting Boucher onto the stretcher. As you can see right at center ice where Forbes and Boucher were involved in an altercation at 8.22 of, these, of this period and they went into the penalty box for seven minutes each and just as they stepped on the ice the play was going down into the Minnesota end. I did not see them come out but then they started to throw punches at each other and it looked like Forbes got on top of Boucher. He was face down, and maybe that his forehead hit the ice as he was making an effort to get up. Uh, John, we'll, we'll have an update on the condition of uh, Boucher as he's being taken off in a stretcher. And, of course, he's one of the uh, native Minnesota players acquired from War Road, Minnesota, acquired from uh, Detroit in a trade for Danny Grant, and a very popular player, understandably, here. 